Well, those guys over at Electric uh, recently did something quite unexpected. They've upgraded their XP 3.0 e-bikes to include hydraulic brakes. I've always uh, been thinking, you know, from the 2.0 to the 3.0, what would be a great upgrade? And hydraulic brakes is always on that list. But, you know, these originally came with uh, mechanical disc brakes, and now they've uh, decided to now ship them with hydraulic brakes. You know, this is something that you typically only see on the premium bikes, you know, that are priced at a higher price point. The cool thing is, is that the price of the XP 3.0s isn't even going up. It's the same price. So it's a great deal to get hydraulic brakes on these bikes. What about us that we already have uh, XP 3.0s and I'm sure, you know, a lot of you already have a 3.0. You know, are you going to be able to get the hydraulic brakes? And the answer is yes, because they're also uh, putting out uh, an upgrade kit that uh, you can upgrade the brakes on your own, or I'm sure you could just take it somewhere if you wanted somebody else to do it. You, know, you can do this yourself with just some basic tools that you probably already have on hand. We'll step through the whole process and then you can decide whether this is something you can do on your own or not. Let me show you the, <laughs> the kit. It's in this box and it's pretty big, right? You're thinking, why do I need such a big box? for a couple of breaks. I'll explain why that is, and there is a little trade-off here, uh, upgrading to the hydraulic brakes that I encountered, and uh, yeah, it's, it's something you need to be aware of uh, before you actually uh, jump in and, and sign up for one of these upgrades. If you're already an XP 3.0 owner, uh, Electric says that they're gonna send out an email soon to, uh, to let you know about this upgrade. And for a limited time, I believe you're gonna be able to get these uh, hydraulic brakes for free. You know, something to jump on immediately when you get this email from them. And I'm sure you're gonna be able to get it after the fact. I don't, I'm not sure what it's gonna cost or anything. Oh, all right, we have got one set of front hydraulic brakes. Got a set of rear hydraulic brakes. And we got a box within a box. Oh God. Yeah, we got a whole new front wheel with tire, rotor, and everything. So why is that? If you look at the uh, the rotor here and how close it is to the spokes, it's, it's pretty close. But this is the new one and it fits with, the, uh, with the, the new hydraulic brakes. What I found with the other one here is that with this wheel and tire assembly, it's just a, a little too close. Like it, and it's, uh, it'll actually hit the uh, spokes on the, on the wheel. The rotor's a little bit too close to the spokes. The new tire here and the rim, it's actually narrower. So it's, it's about half an inch or so narrower than the other one. So when you decide to upgrade, you know, just know that, that you know, we're gonna have a, a smaller front tire. It's probably not noticeable if I wouldn't have told you, but um, but yeah, that's a little bit of a trade-off. Now, if you didn't want that, you could always just uh, install the hydraulic brakes on the, on the rear only, but uh, once you go through this upgrade, your front wheel and tire is going to be a little bit narrower than the one in the back. This is the original tire. This is the new one. So, FYI. All right, so if we look at the uh, the brakes themselves, this is the the front brake assembly. So it says front, and the other one is the rear. So there's only really one difference between the two setups, and that really has to do with the length of the cable. So if we take these out, let's see what we got. 
Got a little piece of paper there. And yeah, we've got our, our brake lever here. Right here. It's the brake lever. And then we've got the calipers here, which go around the, uh, the rotor. This is this orange thing is just a spacer. We're just going to pull that out when it's time, and we'll install this. But yeah, so this is the uh, yeah this is the the front. So the cable length here is going to be a little bit shorter than the rear. So this is the rear. Just take this off, and you notice we got a a bit more cable attached. I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut when we actually install this. I've found that uh, just is quicker and I don't think it makes a big difference at all. But I'll show you what that is when we get there. But yeah, more cable here because we just have a longer run to get from the handlebars to the, uh, the back of the bike. You know, since we're going to be removing the, the front tire, you know, we're going to need a 15 millimeter wrench or a socket. Now, if you don't have this, you could totally just use a crescent wrench. So that's basically to remove and, and put on the new tire. For most of the stuff, we're going to use uh, a set of Allen wrenches. So you could use uh, just kind of a basic bike multi Allen wrench kit here. Uh, the five millimeter, this one here, and it's the same as this, is going to be the one we're going to use for most things. And what I found though is that we are going to need this uh, kind of odd sized small one here and that's a 2.5 millimeter. And the reason we need that is to actually is to uh, remove the throttle assembly and loosen it up and get it out of the way. That's the only thing we need that for. Pretty much everything else we're going to use this 5 millimeter Allen set. And the reason I have this bigger one here is because on my bike one, it doesn't have one of those tiny little uh, two and a half millimeter ones that I need for the uh, for the throttle. So yeah, so we got some Allen wrenches. What's not included in the kit is some zip ties because we're going to have to remove uh, some zip ties that are currently kind of holding some cabling down to the bike frame, and we're going to have to replace those. So need those and probably a set of little cutters here, wire cutters to cut the zip ties. Now, you know, once we uh, get everything back in place, you know, if you had a little uh, torque wrench like this, you know, with an Allen <laughs> on it, which you probably don't, uh, it's nice to have, but you can just get it plenty tight with just these uh, by themselves. And, you know, for the most part, that's usually what we do anyway when we're tightening and adjusting things on the bike. All right, I'm gonna start by just removing all of this uh, cool cable wrap so we can kind of see where the cables are. And it's probably a good idea just to kind of walk through how this setup works just so you know what it does and what it looks like before you take it all apart. So I'm just gonna to try to keep this organized. All right, I'm gonna fast forward and all of this stuff is going to be gone. Alright, so let's take a look at these brakes here. Here's the, uh, on the left hand side we have our front brake and on the right hand side here is our rear brake, which is by the by the gear shifter. So each one of these has two lines going out. We've got the big fat one, which is the uh, which is the cable, and it's also got this second one, which is a a wire that we're gonna disconnect. So this is just connected to the controller, probably just to tell the controller that hey, we're uh, putting the brakes on. Now, if we follow this cable from the front brake down here, it wraps around this little cable thing, which is kind of cool. That's pretty handy. And then goes right into the brake. Now the cable, the cable comes down here and basically is pulled when you pull the handle and it squeezes the brake pads around the rotor, which 
is what applies the brakes. Now to remove the brake itself, we would just remove these two bolts here and this whole assembly would pop off. Now I might do something a little different just to, to make this a little bit quicker and I, I don't think it makes a difference at all, which is to actually leave this bracket on and, and only remove the uh, brake component itself. And I'll, you'll get a better idea what I'm talking about when we get down there. Now I'm going to start by removing the brake handle itself. Now to get to it, we're going to have to remove this cap here on the end of the handle. And we can try to pop it off or just really put some pressure on it and it should come right out. There we go. You'll feel it. There you go. It slides out. And then we can just pull the rubber grip off. There we go. So now you just use this five millimeter and loosen up this bolt on the bottom just enough so then now this will slide off the end of the handlebar. Now while I'm up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide the new brake handle on and just kind of get it snugged up for now so that everything's already in place. I'm just gonna use the same wrench and just tighten it down just enough so that I can squeeze it and then what I can do is just also just put the grip back on. There we go. And then this will be snugged up a little bit here and we'll, we'll tighten it all down when we're done. Now I'm going to go ahead and just remove the, uh, the handle on the rear brake as well since I'm up here. So yes, we have the new one here. Now this one's a little different because we have a throttle here and we have a smaller handle. So I'm going to go ahead and pop off the handle. I'm going to start from the outside in. I'm just going to pull off the handle. So we want to get to the uh, brake handle which is past the throttle. There we go. Just comes right off. And then to release the, uh, the throttle itself, it's going to take that that different, uh, that little two and a half millimeter Allen key, and it's a little hole right about there. There we go, loosen it up. See, now this whole throttle assembly is loose. I can just slide it off, set it aside. It's got a little ring in here, so be careful, that's going to want to fall out. Just leave that there. And then, We'll take our five millimeter, loosen up the brake handle here. And then we should be able to slide that right off. Oh, there goes that little ring. And then I'll take the uh, controller connection here, disconnect it. So now we'll go ahead and put on the new handle for the rear brake. It's gonna slide on like this. Now what's different about this one is that the, uh, the tightening screw is on the top. So we'll slide that down here pretty snug. We need room for the, for the throttle here. So I'm going to go ahead and just tighten that down. For now, we'll adjust it later. And then I'll take my throttle. This little plastic piece kind of came out, so I'll put that in this side. I'll slide this back on. Take my little two and a half millimeter Allen and tighten that down a little bit. Again, we'll adjust it all later. And then got my grip. Slide that back on. Make sure this goes in the hole. Yeah, we'll pop that in the hole. There we go. So that's really all there is to do <laughs> with the uh, with the actual brake handle itself. And we'll go ahead and take the uh, 
little cable that goes to the controller and plug that in, lining up the little notch inside. There we go. Okay, so the, uh, yeah, handle's all set up. Now since we're putting on a new front tire, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little air in this first so it's not completely flat when I mount it on the, the bike. So, and I'm just gonna do this in a couple of stages. You wanna make sure that this little bead, like this edge here, that it's inside the rim. It has a tendency to pop out when it's partially deflated. Okay, so it's about half full. So you see what it wants to do here? See on the top here where it's not completely seated? So you wanna just manipulate a little bit so make sure that you look all the way around on both sides and make sure that the that that bead is nicely seated inside the rim. It looks fairly even and I'm about ready to finish it up here. So I'll put a little bit more. All right, that should be good enough for now. All right, now in order to get the, um, the front tire off the ground so we can replace it and you know, put the brakes on. It's easier if you have some kind of rack. Now this is something I just have mounted to the wall. It's not that expensive, but it does, you know, allow me to, to get the bike up off the ground. Okay, that's all I really need to do here. So now I can get the front tire off the ground. I can spin it and work on the brakes on this side here. Now any kind of bike stand would work pretty good for getting the wheels and the tires off the ground so you can work on them, but you know, there's several ways you can do this. You could also probably just use a little step ladder like this to, uh, you know, to hang it off of. And all you really need to do is to be able to spin the tire and support the bike somehow. All right, well, let's get this uh, front wheel off and we'll put on this new one. And to do that, we're gonna use our 15 millimeter wrench. Like I said, you could also use just a standard crescent wrench. Now these have these little plastic caps over the bolt. So I'll just pop those off. Now this also has a little, uh, locking pin in there, just tap on it. It seats in a, in a little hole right there and that actually yeah, keeps, uh, keeps it from dropping down from the frame on the axle. So yeah, make sure you keep that. So the new wheel also comes with a replacement so you don't have to worry about it. And do the other side. To replace this, I'm going to take a little shortcut. You can see here's the here's the new one, and it comes with this uh, this bracket that says this end up, and that it's for a 180 millimeter rotor. Now, there's already an exact piece right here, and just to have one less thing to get lined up, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this one here and just unscrew these two pieces here. So basically this one here and that one here and just replace the brake assembly. Okay, so there's the brake part and here's the piece that we're just gonna not install because it's already there. Now this orange piece is just a spacer in between the uh, brake pads so that just actually just pops right out. <laughs> Make sure you take that out before you uh, install this. And this is gonna go inside like that. All I need to do is remove the same thing on this one. I could even just reuse the same screws and not have to worry about putting the new ones in. It still has some Loctite on there, so we're probably good to go. So here's the old brake assembly here. It's gonna set that aside. I'm gonna loop it through. It's gonna go over 
the rotor that way. So then I'll just take these and screw them back in. Now I'm just going to tighten these down, just snug but not completely because we, we want to leave a little room for adjustment. Okay, so I still have a little bit of movement in there, which is what I want. Okay, now the old brakes are pretty much disconnected. I can take those off. Now what I want to do here is make sure that the, that the rotor here gets slid in between the two brake pads and the caliper. All right, now I want to make sure that this is all the way up and I'm going to take my little locking washer there and there's a little hole. Make sure that that sits in the hole. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And that keeps the wheel from dropping. So I'm going to push that all the way up and I can tighten these down. Now I want to make sure that the wheel is all the way up and it's seated all the way at the top because that's how we want it when we actually adjust the brakes. I want to push it all the way up so it's properly seated. Okay. We'll tighten those down more a little bit later. But yeah, so now we can spin the tire and you can hear that it's it's in there and it's kind of rubbing a little bit. So we'll do our best to adjust that next. So you can hear that it's it's rubbing a little bit. So I want to adjust it just so it's just about like that. Perfectly in the middle. No noise. One thing you could do is just leave it a little bit loose until it's, it's rubbing a little bit, no big deal. But then leave it a little loose and then just hit the brakes and then hold the brakes and it should center it within the uh, calipers there. Tighten it down. This doesn't necessarily uh, make it perfect all the time, but it gives you a starting point. Okay. This feels good. Stop. Spin. Not rubbing. So yeah, I think that's a good setting right there. And tighten this down a little bit more. You're just basically using the, the bottom and the top adjusting screw here to get this set just right. We're good to go. Give them a final snugging up here. I think it's like six to eight Newton meters if I wanted to use my, to actually torque it down. Right here. Yeah, so we're good. Yeah, so we're good. So you can actually just go by feel and it's and it's fine. All right, so now let's work on the rear brakes. Now if we we've already removed the uh, the handle. So the cable from there, if we trace it back, goes through these loops here all the way down the neck and through the little stand here and there's a zip tie holding a bunch of cables together. We got to remove that. And another zip tie holding all that stuff together. And then up through here to the actual rear brake. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of take this cable here. First it's kind of twisty so I'm just going to unwind it and straighten it out as much as possible so there aren't that many twists in the line. And I'm just going to follow the right path here all the way to the back. So I kind of am generally in the right spot. Now I'm not going to be able to get the end through this, uh, through these holes here, but I'm just going to zip tie it and I'll uh, show you how that works. But just kind of follow it just to make sure that I don't have to redo it when I'm done. So I'm going to go through that little step. Take off another one here. 
I'm going to have to remove this cable and pull it out. So I'm just going to loosen it all the way here with this little adjuster. Yeah, so that's released there. I'm going to loosen up the cable end just enough so I can pull it out like that. So now I have the cable loose. So now this will come out. Could just cut that ferrule off or just pull it off, I guess. Yes, it just has this little ferrule thing on the end. I'm gonna remove this, this little spring, and this piece. Yeah, so now I can pull the cable through this hole. And I'm not gonna really be able to reuse it, which on the other bike it didn't use it, it just zip tied it. Also gonna fish it through this hole. Okay. The rear brake cable is released. So now we just remove the uh, brake itself and put the new one on. All right, well, I'm basically gonna take the same approach that I took with the front on this. And that is to uh, just, this piece that came here that was attached to the brake like that. There's an identical piece right here. So I'm just gonna leave this one on and just mount the brake itself using those two adjuster screws to the end. And I'll go ahead and pull that spacer out. And we'll get rid of the old one first. So I'm just gonna remove these two adjusters. Just gonna back them all the way out. And then the whole brake, since we already removed the cable, this thing is just gonna come right out. Okay, that one's out. Now here's the old brake. And we got the new brake with the, with the, with the pads and the caliper. It's gonna slide right over that. All right, with the rear motor in place, it's installed. Just gonna kind of backtrack and follow the cable all the way back up to the front, tying down with some of these zip ties all along the way, kind of where it was zip tied before. And then we'll work our way back up to, to the, uh, the handle and just kind of clean it up and we gotta put these back on too. Well, this bike sure has some stopping power now, much better than it was before. But one more thing that uh, Electric has done is to actually upgrade the, uh, the power management system so that transitioning into those pedal assist modes is supposed to be very, very smooth now. And it's the same as uh, same system they have in their newer bikes that they've released in the last few months. So when that becomes available, I'll share that as well. And if you need anything from Electric, uh, be sure to reach out to them and use my link if you can. It's rvwithtito.com slash electric. And you know, they'll help you out and anything you end up buying, you know, it's a affiliate link. So I'll get a little bit of credit and you can uh, buy me a beer if you found anything helpful or useful in this video. But until then, you know, have fun riding and as always, be safe and uh, I'll see you later. Bye.